Okay, the allele for unattached earlobes is dominant over the allele for attached earlobes. In a population of 500 individuals, 25% show the recessive phenotype. So 25% show the recessive phenotype. That means that our recessive phenotype, the little a little value, is equal to 25%, which is 0.25 for the frequency. So be careful here because they already gave it to you in percent. You don't need to find the percent out of 500. We have it. They saved us a step. That was nice. So how many individuals would you expect to be homozygous dominant and heterozygous for this trait? And again, they want to know how many individuals, not just what frequency of individuals. So here we have our 0.25. Little a, little a, by the way, is our Q square value, which means Q square is 0.25, which means my Q value must be 0.5. So if my Q value is 0.5, we apply that to our P plus Q equals 1, which means P plus 0.5 equals 1, P equals 0.5. So now we've got our Q value and our P value, and it's just a matter of plugging those into our two equations. So to find our homozygous dominant, that is our P squared value. So P squared is going to be 0.5 squared. And when you do that, you get P squared is equal to 0.25. And so 25% of our population, so we're going to multiply our population times 0.25 to get the number of individuals, and that ends up being 125. So your answer for this part of the question is you have 125 homozygous dominant individuals in a population of 500. To get our heterozygous, we're going to do our 2PQ, so 2 times 0.5 times 0.5, which oddly enough, 2PQ is equal to 0.5. Gotta love decimal land, right? So if we take 500 individuals times 0.5, uh, we get 250. So we have 250 individuals in our population that are heterozygous for the attached earlobe trait. To check your answer, we can uh, go over to our recessive population here. That was originally 25%, uh, um, so that means it's 125. So if we have 125 recessive, 125 dominant, and a 250 heterozygous, that should all add up to 500, and it does. So we've completed it correctly. Congratulations. All right, let's go on to problem number three. The allele for hair pattern called widow's peak is dominant over the allele for widow's peak. In a population of 1,000 individuals, 510 show the dominant phenotype. So this is one that throws a lot of people off because it is the dominant phenotype. That means we could either be seeing uh, homozygous dominant or heterozygous is equal to 510. So then how many individuals would you expect of each of the possible three genotypes for this trait? So they threw us a curveball, and I could sit and let you struggle with it. And if you were in class, you did. But if you have these guys being 510, that means your little a, little a must be 490. And so our um, frequency of our little a, little a in the population is 0.49, which means Q squared is equal to 0.49, and then Q would, equal be, would be equal to 0.7. So if we apply that to our P plus Q formula, that means we have P plus 0.7 equals 1. Therefore, P must be 0.3. And then the problem's pretty easy to work from here. And so um, they want each of the three genotypes. So let's do our P squared value. Um, and the nice thing is how many, in okay, how many individuals, I was going to say, I thought this was frequency, never mind. So how many individuals? So P squared um, is equal to 0.3 squared, which means our P squared value is equal to 0.09. And so we're going to multiply that times our population. And so that means we have 90. So 90 individuals are expected to be homozygous dominant. By the way, these are never guaranteed to be this. It's just statistically speaking, it's um, highly likely. 
All right, and then we have our heterozygous is 2PQ. So 2 times 0.3 times 0.7, or actually be 0.7, 0.3. doesn't matter, same answer. Um, 2PQ is equal to um, 0.42. And so we take that times our population, and that ends up being 420. So that means we have 420 individuals anticipated to be heterozygous. And finally, our homozygous recessive is our Q square value, and that is 0.7. So we want to take 0.7 squared. So that means Q squared is equal to 0.49. And actually, we had that answer in the beginning. I just gave you an extra step. You're welcome. Um, so 1,000 times 0.49 is equal to 490, so we have 490 homozygous recessive in our population. And just to do a little fact check here, if we go and we add up our values, um, 90 plus 420 is equal to 510, add that to 490, and you get 1,000. And so um, looks like we've done this one correctly. In the United States, about 16% of the population is Rh negative. The allele for Rh negative is recessive to the allele for Rh positive. If the student population of a high school is 2,000, how many students would you expect for each of the three possible genotypes? So they gave us 16% is negative, and that is the recessive trait. So our little a, little a is 16%, which is 0.16. That means our Q square value is 0.16, which means our Q value is 0.4. We apply that to our P plus Q formula. Um, P plus Q equals, I'm um, sorry, <laughs> P plus Q equals 1. Check my work. P plus Q equals 1. P plus 0.4 equals 1, which means that P must be equal to 0.6. So my Q value is 0.4, and my P value is 0.6. So let's go ahead and apply that to each of the three possible genotypes. So our P square, or our homozygous dominant genotype, is going to be 0.6 squared. Uh, that is equal to 0.36, and so that means my P squared value um, my population here, sorry, uh, we have 2,000 in our population times 0.36, and so 2,000 times 0.36 comes out to be 720. So that means we're anticipating 720 individuals to be homozygous dominant. For our heterozygous population is 2PQ, so we've got 2 times 0.6 times 0.4. And so 2PQ is equal to 0.48. So we're going to take 2,000 times 0.48. I just want to double check my math. Times 0.48. We get 960. So we have 960 anticipated to be heterozygous. And finally, our Q square value is going to be 0.4 square. So 0.4 square is 0.16. And so if we take 2,000 times 0.16, we get, let's see. 320. So 320 individuals expected to be homozygous recessive. And just to double check our answers to make sure that we're okay, if we take our 320 plus our 960 plus our 720, they add up to 2,000. Yay! So really the catch on this one was the fact that you weren't working with a population of 1,000, it was 2,000. And that's how they were trying to throw you off. All right, I'll record the next set, so check the next video.